Hello and welcome in today's exciting episode. I bead three jackets. The ruby red one, the orange Chanel, and that cute one with the pink in the back. So, let us begin. I have had a few people say they don't understand the appeal of a beaded jacket, but um, before you rush to judgment, um, next time you're in the city, head to a department store with a and the designer section of the women's department and ask very nicely to try on a Balma um, beady jacket with pearls on it. And um, yeah, you will see what all the fuss is about because the weight of the beading makes the jacket sit so beautifully and closely to your body. It just feels like it fits perfectly. So yeah, it's not just the aesthetic reasons um, to love a beaded jacket. They just fit beautifully so yeah okay let's begin so I think with this red one I was originally going to do a um, beaded trim and then just make it first and then attach it but mm, I'm not all that excited about the idea about the prospect of that so I thought instead I just do all over I have a lot of different color red um, glass pearls that I've collected over the years, a lot of them. So I thought it might be cool if I just did an all over beading and used up some of my glass pearls. So I might try that with this one. I also have these two, which have been ready for, um, the actual jacket is completely made, like the lining is also sewn in. So it's completely made and I was going to make beaded trim for these two as well. But um, with this one, I did actually make a beaded trim. It was had a black base and then sort of these pinky grey um, brown beads. And then that didn't look quite right. So I added some fluoro pink to it and that just made it look worse. So then I was like, I pulled that apart and I was like, okay, I'll make a it just out of brown beads because the backing color is sort of black mixed with brown and um, I was going to do that but then I thought I don't know if you're ignoring the pink blobs that's kind of why I like it so yeah I've started calling this Barbie learns to code because the pink lines sort of remind me of the green ones in the matrix so yeah, I've decided I'm going to accentuate the pink with this one. So I've created this mix of all different pinks and they clash. I know they do, but I think they're going to look fabulous with all over beading. And at least it's not going to walk away from what it is. And I think that's the key with the ones that, you know, some people would think are ugly I think it's just to accentuate what I fell in love with about it so yeah I will be all over beading that with lots of different pink plastic beads and then we have the Chanel one and I actually made the trim for this it was fabulous but it wasn't heavy enough I used all light beads and artificial flowers that of course are light too because they're just this small layers of fabric and um, yeah so I had to pull that one apart so now I was going to do another really big trim like the Chanel banana one I did but I thought maybe I should do the opposite and just do all over light beading on it so so these are the beads that I pulled out and I think they match quite well I'm still having a hard time sort of getting past the idea of doing a fabulous over the top beaded trim for this. So I will try just do a little bit of um, all over beaded beading on this one and we'll see how it looks and we'll see if I can get past my fixation with doing a big bling trim on this one. If it has all over beading, it will be more wearable. You can wear it as a casual jacket a lot more. So, you know, it's more practical, but I mean, 
<laughs> Who makes the Chanel tweed jacket for practicality, really? So yes, we will see. Okay, I haven't started the red one yet, but I have just done a sample section on the Chanel tweed. I don't know. I like it. It's more subtle than how I thought this one would end up. And I guess that's a good thing. <laughs> Not exactly a ringing endorsement, is it? I really like it. It's basically the tweed, but souped up. And I like how it doesn't change. That's quite cute. It's a lot more grown up than I, it's very subtle, but still very bling. Yes, I think I like that. It's so different from what, how I thought this one would end up, but yeah, I think I like it. I shall continue with this one. I also, hang on a sec. I also did a sample on the back of this one. And again, I've gone for subtle. So I've used the pretty much the same types of pinks as were already on the jacket. And I've just gone over the pink lines with pink. And I think this is adorable. This is so cute. It's really, I mean, it's both over the top and subtle at the same time. I don't think you can really... I mean, you can see it if you know what you're looking for. But yeah, I really like this. And yeah, I'm glad I am going over the, there's some rows that are just plain white and I'm going over those ones because they're probably what I don't like. What I like least about this jacket are the white rows. I love the pink, I love the brown, but I think the white rows kind of make it look a little bit too much like Neapolitan ice cream. Maybe that's just me. Pink and white marshmallows covered in chocolate. So yeah, sort of disguising the white lines a little bit. And I think that's what makes me like it more. Yeah, I really like this. I shall continue with this one as well. So I've done about half of the beading for this jacket, this side here. And it is so cute. At first I was worried that the beading might sort of fudge up the dots and you, it wouldn't seem so Barbie learns to co like a pink version of the Matrix. But I think it still looks quite strong. You can sort of see why I call it that. And yeah, I'm really happy with this. I love it. I'll, Turn it around to the side so you can actually see the beaded side. But for a comparison, I thought I'd just show you this way. And oh, this is so pretty. Okay, that probably doesn't help you. But oh, this is so cute. You can see the patches that I haven't done, but oh my gosh. I'm I'm just kind of surprised that it works so well. And yeah, I love this. It's adorable. So I shall keep going with this one. I haven't done any more on the other two. Kind of just trying to get this one done. It's um all three of these ones have the lining sewn in and I knew it was going to be difficult. And the arms in particular, I've <laughs> cursed a few times, but on the whole, it's actually, hmm, it's not impossible. And um, I just know how difficult it is to sew in the sleeves after the sleeve and the torso have been beaded. And also how oh, absolutely impossible it is to sew in the collar line once the most of the jacket is beaded because 
you have to turn in the right sides together so you have the right side of this which is like it's got all these it's very three-dimensional because it's got so many big beads on it and then yeah just sewing the other ones together like the collar line of the other ones together that I just recently did was oh, really frustrating and really time consuming and you have to go back and bead the top bit anyway so I'm thinking maybe going forward I would do it this way sort of so the lining is sewn in and yeah it's just this way you can get to sew in the sleeves like set the sleeves and sew in the collar um yeah it's just a bit easier in this order it's still difficult to bead some parts but all up I think I prefer this like fully making the jacket and just leaving the so you leave the lining open so you can access inside the whole of the jacket yeah I think going forward I'll do it this way sew them all up and then that way if I I can decide whether I want to bead all over or I want to do a beaded trim but yeah I think when you bead all over it is better to have three layers of backing so hmm anyway I'm really happy with this one and I will do the other half now so I went ahead and finished the beading on the brown and pink one and it is adorable it's exactly what I hoped for this jacket when I bought the fabric all those years ago from B&J Fabrics. They have some very lovely tweeds, but if you're looking for something on the cheaper side, I definitely recommend Mood Fabrics of the New York fabric stores. But yeah, B&J Fabrics has there's quite a few stores in fabric stores in New York that have the higher end tweeds and uh, this one I'm so happy with the way it turned out it's adorable and I've realized what it is that I love about it so much it um it makes me think of those toadstools you know the ones with the red cap and the white dots on them it reminds me of them I think it's just so cute and energetic and perky, I guess. But it also, yeah, it's still going to be called Barbie Learns to Code because it definitely reminds me of those matrix green lines of code, but in pink. I think especially now with the beads on because it makes it look more three dimensional, like there's loads and loads of lines of codes you know, at the front and then in the background as well. I'll show you the back. It's just completely adorable. I love this. I am so happy with it. For so long, I just could not figure out how to get this to work. And then I was like, you know what? The pink dots aren't ugly. They're beautiful. And then as soon as I sort of changed my mindset on that and stopped trying to hide the ugly pink dots I put them to the foreground and now they are definitely the most beautiful thing about this I'm so happy with it and I did do a where's Wally with this one there is one musk pink skull where is it I find it so hard to find things looking through the lens hang on a sec Oh my gosh, I was literally staring straight at it. So if you were yelling at the screen, yes, you are correct. That is the one musk pink skull in the entire piece. I know I have oodles of them. I have a, a couple of dozen of them, but I just can't find them at the moment. And I thought this balance, balance of colours was so good. I didn't want to throw too many in anyway, because it would have sort of thrown it out a bit. So all I have to do now for this one is um, just go over it very carefully and check that all the beads are 
on properly because no matter how careful you are when you're making it once you're done you always find something that needs to be fixed so i'll give it the once over very carefully and once that's done and i fixed anything that needs to be fixed i will just hem the cuffs and the inside as well there's still it needs to be <laughs> i used this variegated silk for the lining and oh it does not look good <laughs> i'm glad it's on the inside but yeah i love this jacket now love it love it love it so now i have to get back to the chanel one which i have decided i don't like <laughs> so let's get that one out but first we'll just have another quick look at the front of this one. Oh, it is so cute i'm so happy with that gold star okay so here is the chanel jacket and this is the section that i did and i feel like compared to the pink and brown jacket these beads are too small and i don't know the pink and brown jacket and the silver one from april they just turned out so well when i was using slightly larger beads still the light plastic ones but slightly larger and hmm I don't know why I'm trying to be more adult and more mature because clearly <laughs> that's not working for me so I think I will just I mean I could I certainly mixed up a lot so I could go ahead and do the whole jacket with this but I don't know this is one of my favorite tweeds I don't want to I don't know it matches the silk italian silk lining beautifully but i mean i'm the only one who ever sees the lining so yeah i i'm not in love with it that's the problem it's nice enough but i'm not in love with it so um i could i sort of went overboard when i made that mix of beads so i could just pick out all the big ones from that mix and Sort of take them off and do the same thing again but with only the bigger beads but i don't know i'm i'm not that in love with the mix i mean orange is not my favorite color and sort of they're a bit too grayscale for me the apricots feel like they have a lot of gray and black in them and I prefer like if you're gonna use orange then go for it and sort of thing so I do have this mix of very very bright oranges but I have an Italian tweed that's Chanel-ish and um if you've seen my um conmarine my tweed collection there was a light blue Italian tweed that had bits of flura orange in it and I think the orange bright orange beads would be perfect for that and I don't think they're perfect on this Chanel tweed because the Chanel has that sort of mustardy orange whereas these are full-on bright oranges that tiny little bead is a mustard orange but everything else is more of a true orange so yeah I think it's the bright ones would be wasted on this next i have the fluoro ones this is basically all my pink red and orange fluoro ones and i even have some short uh, um whatever um pearls they're matte pearls so they don't have a shine and they're in fluoro colors and they're in their own separate bag because they were very expensive but um, even though they don't look particularly fabulous, they are. And um, yeah, so these are basically all the fluoro ones that I have. And it's only enough for one jacket. And I have this Linton tweed in navy and cream that has little spots of little flags of all the different fluoro colours. And I just think that jacket could look at the moment it's got sort of um these sort of color beads on it and it just they don't work 
on that particular lint and tweed. So I thought I'd take them off and put these on instead. And if I use it up on this jacket, I mean, they'd look okay. I mean, they'd look good, but they wouldn't look fabulous. Whereas on the lint and tweed, I do think they have the potential to be very fabulous. So that just leaves green and this orange Chanel tweed does have, well, it basically has every color in it. It's got great mushroom, mustard orange, fluoro sonia um, red, and then it's got white. It's also got fluoro yellow and fluoro green. But the fluoro green, I feel, looks like a standard green. So yeah, I thought maybe, because I've got so many of these pea green beads, I've got this bag of bigger ones and also those pony beads that kids use when they um, braid their hair. So I thought maybe I'll use green on top. Maybe. I don't know. Green is my favourite colour and I absolutely love it. I know it never really looks good on people as clothing, but I don't know. As a kid, frogs were my absolute favourite animal. And so, yeah, I just, I guess, I don't know. I just really love green. <laughs> I am aware that it doesn't, <laughs> it hardly ever looks good on anyone, but I don't really care whether I look good or not. I just care about whether green on me makes me feel happy. Green on other people, oof, that just depends on who the person is really. But yeah, so I am aware it's a difficult colour to carry off. But um, yeah, I think it would look good on this jacket. I think these bright ones, they are fabulous, but they sort of make the jacket sort of pale in comparison. Whereas the green, I feel like it brings out the fluoro yellow and green, sort of, and also the mushroom color, but in a nice way. Whereas I feel like these sort of make it, all the rest of it seem a bit beige. They make everything else pale in comparison. Whereas, yeah. I think this one sort of, the greens keep the yellow in check, in my opinion, sort of thing, and balance it out. So yeah, I think I will do the green. Oh, yeah, I think. Well, I still have to unpick these. I know that I definitely don't want to keep doing this. So I'll unpick these and then, yeah. I'll see if I've changed my mind, but I'm pretty sure. And I have a different lint and tweed that um, I think these ones would look really fabulous on that. So yeah, it's not, <laughs> there's no way I'm going to pick those apart and sort them back into their little bags. I think I'll just use them on a different jacket. So yeah, I'm happy with this choice. I think that would look good on the Italian tweed in the light blue. That would look good on the Linton tweed that has the fluoro colours. And yeah, I think I'll use the green ones. This looks so adorable. I love it. And I mean, I'm going to be wearing it with my Valentino fluoro green handbag. So, I mean, duh. Sometimes I finally, finally get to what the jacket was always supposed to be. And I'm just like, why did I ever think it was anything else? This is so perfect. But yeah, I think I had to go through all the other design choices to get to know that this is so incredibly right. I'm so happy with this. It's adorable. It's part, the colour is frog, but it's kind of like those toads. You know how they have their skin and then they have all those warts and bumps and things. Oh, it's so cute. I love it. And my rock stud kind of had 
rock stud handbag has the, those square, um, sort of square pyramid things are called rock studs and yeah matchy matchy I'm very happy with this it is taking a lot more beads than I thought but I love it I was a bit concerned about because I ended up putting the beads on on the red lines bright uh, fluoro red lines and I wasn't sure whether to put them in between the lines or on the lines but I'm glad I went for on the lines it's very cute so yeah now I just have the rest of the jacket to do and I still have the red one to do but I'm pretty sure um, like I kind I have so many red glass pearls that I need to use up and I just think that would be a really good one to use those up on so hopefully that works and yeah next month I want to make this um, floral jacket sort of sort of inspired by that $56,000 um, Dolce & Gabbana rose jacket, sort of, not really. I don't like it that much. I've got a couple of other Chanel Couture ones that were by Lesage that um, I'm much more inspired by. In particular, the navy blue camellia one. I love that one. Anyway, so I might use the last of the red pearls on that, but yeah, so I want to use the bulk of the red pearls up first so I know how many I have left. Anyway, I'll finish this one first. And there's the other one. See, that's the lining. It's sort of, um, I guess some people would call it a hombre. Like it's light, really light at one end and really dark at the other. But it's also got lines in it, which is why I call it variegated. But yeah, anyway, you won't see it. And I'm glad I don't have any more of that lining because it's not my favourite. But, oh, I just love this jacket. Okay, two out of two. I'm very happy with this. Very happy. The orange Chanel is progressing. I was only using three sorts of beads. So one the big apple ones two and the pony beads three but I, because i'm using so many beads per line and the lines are so close to each other i realized that yeah i wasn't going to be able to cover everything and hmm, i kind of like the uh, patchy way of you know just having a few lines and then leaving some but i've decided i'm just going to go for an all over one on this one so yeah i've also added some other beads so i've got some skulls in there there's two different sizes and also some small round ones it's more obvious on the back so i will turn around oh i just want to show you this sleeve i really like this racing stripe think it's very cool I'm tempted just to leave it like this but I feel like on this one it sort of looks as though it's half done it really does need the full coverage or maybe not I don't know I'll show you the back here's the back see it looks fabulous when it's all done but I've used some like pony beads a lot in some areas and then the big ones chunky ones more in other areas i think it looks really cool so it's all over but it's still sort of uneven because of the bead choice and i really like that so yeah and as i said you can sort of see on this side how many different types of sizes there are so yeah, I'm slowly getting there. This one's quite fiddly. I think the um, maybe it's because the lay uh, the um, silk lining is the really really expensive 
Italian silk and it's so buttery it's um a little bit well it's a lot more fiddly to work around rather than the just the standard silk so it's still sort of slippery and so light that you sort of have to make doubly sure that you're not accidentally stitching a button a button through it I mean a bead through it but um yeah it's um I don't know this one's just a bit harder more difficult so I don't know what it is I'll do after I've done this one I'll do the red plaid one with the glass beads glass pearls and um yeah I'll just after I've done all three I'll make a decision about yeah whether I should sew in the lining before I do all the beading on each of the other jackets because there's quite a few to go so yeah might just be that I'm a little bit tighter and there's a lot more beads in this one a lot more so yeah but I do really really like this really really and I'll just show you that racing stripe again I think this is fabulous so I'm sort of hoping I'll be have enough beads to do the arms sort of like um, crocodile backs or alligator backs so I'll have the big ones in the middle so they'll sort of be the furthest out and then around them I'll do slightly smaller ones going down and then smaller smaller and then under the arm will be really really small so yeah that will entertain me <laughs> while I do all this copious amounts of beading so yeah I'll get back to it oh and I think I'm going to do the red rose jacket in May and then in June maybe the because I bought so many flowers a ridiculous amount well they were like 60% off so it was a bargain well it's not a bargain when you spend hundreds of dollars but relative and then yeah I think in the subsequent months I'll do an apricot one and then I'll do a um a sort of white green and pink yeah really light pink one because there's a couple of different um silhouettes and designs that I want to try out so yeah Anyway, I'll get back to beading this one. The orange Chanel is finished. And it's looking very cute. I didn't have enough of the medium ones to do the alligator sleeves. I just so I just used up all the big ones, all the medium ones, and some of the smaller ones and yeah now i think it looks more like an armadillo than an alligator because in armadillo means little armored one in spanish and i do think it kind of looks like armor so this is now going to be my armadillo jacket and it's so cute i really love it very happy so I've just got the red one to go. Okay, red plaid jacket, your time has finally come. Let's get you beaded. So I have done part of the back and one side of the front. Still have the arms and the rest of the torso to go. It's quite cute. I really like that I used different reds. I think it gives it more depth. I'm also glad I used a lot of the bright ones. I think that looks good. I'll show you the back. I haven't really done that much of it, but I think it looks cute. It's nice and ordered, but it's still just quirky enough to be interesting. I just have one arm to go, the front, the back, and one sleeve done. 
I'm quite happy with it. All Over Pearls always reminds me of, makes me think of Queen Elizabeth I. So, yeah, so tempted to add um, like thread, gold thread through it. I do also have some ruby red metallic thread, but just so it'll look more Elizabethan, but I won't. <laughs> It's quite enough work as it is. So yeah, each of them is double stitched down. Some of the larger ones are triple stitched. But yeah, I'm getting there slowly. And I've sort of marked under the arms. So um, with the pearls, uh, they're glass pearls. They're obviously a solid glass bead. And then they've got this pearlized paint over the top. So um, more so than regular beads, you sort of have to be careful that they don't brush each other under because obviously when you're wearing it, your arm swings at least a little bit. So yeah, I've just sort of marked where I have to use really small pearls and where the underarm bit sort of starts. And I've also got similar ones in the back. And um, yeah, I think it worked out quite well. You can still see that there's pearls because I think your eye registers if there's just no pearl there. So I've just put really small ones. So you still get the shine of a pearl, but you don't, if they're not going to catch on each other. But I also think I will buy a, um, I don't generally wear nail polish at all, but I think I'll buy a bottle of red nail polish just in case there are any little scratches but yeah i really like this it's very nice and it's so subtle i think most people won't even notice that there's any beading on there well i mean i work in male dominated environments so you know that's what i mean when most people won't notice but yeah, I'm really happy with it. It's bling enough to be interesting to me. And um, yeah, but conservative enough to pass. And um, yeah, I love it. I love the weight of a, a beaded jacket. They just sit so beautifully. Okay, break over. It's time for me to bead this last arm. Yay, the beading on all three is finally done. Now I just need to go over them all, check them, make sure all the beads are secure and everything's right. Then I need to stitch up the lining to the hem and on the cuffs for each of the three and they will be done. So close, so close. There we go, the hem and the cuffs of the pink one have been sewn up. I also added a couple of um, beads to this side because it just felt like there was a bit of a gap, that flower and the bright pink pony bead. So yeah, it just looks better now. So that one's done. Two more to go. Next we have the orange Chanel. And it, um, lots of threads along here so I'll have to neatly tuck them under before I can pin the lining and sew it down. I was trying to figure out what else this um, jacket reminded me of and I think the elongated beads remind me of strawberry seeds. From far away it kind of looks like a strawberry but I'm still going to call it the aardvark because I love that the um, it's a Spanish word for little armored one and people always say fashion is your armor so yeah it's going to be the aardvark i shall finish it now and we have number three the red one done and this one i've decided is going to be called ruby because it's red on red with red lining really like the way this one turned out Okay, time for a group shot. 
group shot. Okay, technically it's three different photos patched together, but I only have one mannequin, so group shot. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching the process of me beading all these jackets. I'm so happy to have them done and can finally wear them all. It's awesome. So thank you for watching and have fun making your own beaded Chanel style jacket.